are here to convene the meeting of the Waterbury Select Board for Monday, March the 20th, 2023 in the Steel Community Room. Uh, the first item on our agenda is to approve the agenda. Any additions, deletions from the agenda? I move to approve the agenda as written. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, interrupt, to interrupt, but I can no longer hear you guys, you guys at all. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to oh, approve the agenda as written. Great. And I seconded it. Thank um, you. Um, Could you hear that down now, Danny? Yeah, it was wild. It just went silent. So, <laughs> um, I. I'd like to see if we could, I'd like to make an amendment if we could um, either before the executive session, if that is the most appropriate, um, to add a couple, two, three minutes to go over the next meeting's agenda. Um, something I'm hoping can be added uh, to our meeting agendas in perpetuity. Oh, okay. okay. Any further discussion on that? I'll, I'll accept the uh, okay. amendment. Friendly amendment. Friendly okay. amendment. Okay. Thank you, Roger. Uh, are there any other further items or uh, discussion on the agenda? Melissa, did you want to take up the minutes of town meetings? Oh, well, I guess I would say as a matter of formality, the, the minutes currently listed on the consent agenda are our last select board meeting. And so I didn't realize until I came in today and I asked Karen, do we approve the minutes of town meeting, which have been posted on the town website. In last year's town report, it does say that the minutes were approved. Um, that being said, I hadn't reviewed them prior to tonight, not knowing that. So we could do it tonight or probably I would propose at the next meeting if that's sure. okay with folks. I'd probably do it next one. Yeah, so I agree. Okay, good to know. Uh, so in this consent, uh, consent agenda, we're just approving the minutes from okay. our previous meeting. Perfect. If there are no further uh, amendments to the agenda, uh, all in favor of the amended agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Agenda is passed. Next item, do we not have a public? We um, omitted that. We have public at 725. We need oh, a chair, okay. the vice chair, well, I'm, so, I'm so used to so <laughs> seeing it right there. Thank you. Uh, we get to all sometimes become creature habits. The next item on the agenda is uh, select board organization to elect a chair vice chair and secretary for the uh, board. Uh, the everything is open. I will make a motion to elect Roger Clapp as the next uh, chair of the select board. I'm happy to second that. Oh, no, you have it, Danny. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the uh, election? Oh. Uh, well, my would, would you like to say something? <laughs> sure. Um, first, I want to thank you uh, for the nomination and also for the tremendous job that you've done over the past year. Uh, I think uh, we got a lot of work done uh, over this past year and uh, really enjoyed uh, your leadership and uh, appreciate uh, the fact that we now have uh, a new municipal manager, a new uh, town clerk uh, and treasurer, um, and uh, we'll soon have a new uh, town planner. Uh, and uh, just want to say that uh, we appreciate uh, your leadership over this past year. So thank, thank you, Roger. I really appreciate your word. It, it's been a pleasure and even more so an honor to serve as chair for the last year, and I know we'll be in capable hands with Roger, Assume, assuming we'll, we'll, we will vote him in, right. which I well, think you. was fine. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. <coughs> Next item is to, uh, uh, is a nomination for vice chair of the board. 
I think it's Roger's meeting, though. Oh, I didn't know if I was going to do, do, do the whole election, and then, then I hand it over to him. All right. You, would, would you like to do that? Uh, Mike, why don't you continue uh, through this process, and then I'll take over okay. on the next item. Thanks. <coughs> do we have a motion for a vice chair of the board? Alyssa? Um, I move to appoint Danny Kelman as vice chair of the select board. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. <coughs> There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There being none. Oh, okay. Do you wish to say something, Danny? No, I. I'll, I'll say something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if I was subdued. I just thank you, and I'm glad to uh, move forward with the nomination. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, you've been uh, absent a couple of different times for family reasons over the past year. Uh, I think Danny has uh, demonstrated a remarkable ability to lead the, uh, the select board, uh, and uh, I'm very happy to, to second the nomination for her to continue as vice chair. I just want to, in the discussion section, uh, I do also appreciate, Danny, all, all of your hard work in behalf of the select board. It's really you know, you helped me out. I think we've had some good, good discussions, uh, and uh, I wish you, you luck being vice chair again. Thanks. Thanks, someone. Okay. So, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. And the last is to appoint a secretary for the select board. Uh, are there any? <coughs> Nominations for Secretary of the Select Board. I'd like to nominate uh, Alyssa Johnson as Secretary for the Select Board for this coming year. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Mm -hmm. A second? Okay. <laughs> Two seconds. Second all around the house. <laughs> we have a motion. Thank you, Mama. We have a motion and a second. Any, <coughs> any, any discussions on the Secretary's position? Would you like to say something? Else? Well, I wanted to just thank and acknowledge Karen Petrovic, who is our actually acting secretary, and note that this is a formality only, and we are very grateful for her work. Taking the minutes for most meetings, and I'm happy to fill in in the rare instance. You're away. I'm happy to. In behalf of the, the whole table and uh, in Zoom land, I, I think we all agree, Karen, you've done a wonderful job, and you take that responsibility off of our, our plates. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I would just add that uh, when Karen has not been able to be here, uh, Alyssa has uh, jumped right in and uh, done a remarkable job uh, on serving as a secretary. And that's part of the reason I wanted to nominate her for, to serve another year. Thanks. If there's nothing further to discuss, all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? Aye. We almost like that. <laughs> <laughs> position. But a uh, little, little delay. Uh, any abstentions? If not, thank you, Alyssa, for being secretary. And now I will pass the baton over to Roger to conduct today's meeting. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. All right, uh, we're a little bit ahead of our agenda, uh, which is a good thing. Um, the next item is the consent agenda. Uh, I'll uh, entertain a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Any second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of the uh, passing the consent agenda as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The consent agenda has been approved. Okay, we're already to the public uh, portion of the meeting. Uh, this is uh, an opportunity for anyone in the audience to address uh, any item that is not on the warrant agenda. Uh, and I would ask that you uh, can uh, please speak, limit your remarks to uh, five minutes or less. Uh, and if it requires more, we can add it to the agenda uh, in the uh, coming weeks. 
So, does any, is anyone in the public? Uh, yes, Anne. I have a question for the select board about the town meeting. I would like to know why there was no Pledge of Allegiance, why there was no band, and why there was no Keith Wallace Award. you want me to address that? Sorry. All right, so we have three questions, actually, uh, from Anne. One was the Pledge of Allegiance, one was why there was no band, and then one was uh, uh, what the, the status of the Keith Wallace the Award. Keith. Yeah, Wallace Keith Award. Wallace Award. Um, I can address the last one. Um, I uh, understand that uh, the Keith Wallace Award is being discussed uh, uh, by the EFUD board, uh, and that there are some plans afoot to make a, a announcement on that uh, at, during one of their upcoming meetings. <coughs> And that to be true as well. Okay. Um, as far as the band, um, the Waterbury Community Band did not reach out to me for uh, any permission to participate, um, so they did not participate. I don't know who their organizer is, I know who their solicitor is, and she did not ask me if she could come and participate. Um, as for the Pledge of Allegiance, that was an oversight band. I guess um, Mr. Kilgore has previously done that, and I, I didn't know to remind him, and he, nor did anyone else, so it was a miss. I apologize. It was brought to my attention the next day, and I've made a note for it for next year, um, and that's the answer for that. All right. Thank you, Ann, for those comments, because I, I think this is, we're kind of a little bit out of the loop on doing town meeting, because we haven't done it, so, it, and with a whole change in, you know, Tom being a new town manager, you know, I think some of those things wound up, unfortunately, got and slipped. I know usually Skip, Skip Flanders has been the one. Some said the beginning of the town meeting, and it's not a... You're, you're breaking up. Uh, Ann, can you please repeat that? <laughs> I, I just feel that even if Jeff had forgotten it, somebody should have spoken up because I just thought it was terrible that even after a hiatus of two, three years, we shall, still should have had a Pledge of Allegiance. It was an official town meeting, and I think in those instances, I mean, this democracy is just going to hell in a handbasket if we can't observe just one little thing about our democracy at a town meeting. Yeah, well, I think uh, you received a, an apology uh, from Karen, and uh, I'll also reiterate that. Uh, it was an oversight. Uh, we regret it, and uh, we're going to take steps to make sure that it's uh, respected uh, in the upcoming town meeting uh, in the following year. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Is that, that okay, Ann? You're, you're okay? Um, anyone else from the public? Okay. Well, thank you, and thank you, Ann, for your comments. <coughs> um, we have now uh, the public hearing for 51 South Main Street VCDB uh, P grant application. Is this uh, one where we need Nicola to uh, address uh, the police to come forward? Perfect. I never know if I should stand or sit, but I can't come back to see. There we go. So thank you, everyone, for having me here again. Sorry to interrupt, but can no. you please just introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. No. I'm Nicola Anderson. I'm the Director of Real Estate Development for Downstreet Housing and Community Development. Um, I'm here um, on behalf of Downstreet uh, requesting that we open up um, an application and to apply for funds for um, its community development block grant uh, funds from VCDP, which is a Vermont community development program. Uh, we are requesting uh, to apply for $500,000 in funds, which is not the maximum amount, but we feel like it's an amount that um, 
more likely will hopefully put us as a stronger application. Um, as you know, we were here about a month ago for requesting ARPA dollars for this project. We have gotten our, um, we weren't initially going to apply for these funds, truthfully, because they are the most competitive funds in the state. Um, these are funds that have not increased whatsoever their allowance, and it's really challenging to get them. But due to <coughs> our construction budget, um, the, our cost estimate that came back and project budget, we are ne needing to fill the gap with these funds. Um, however, we have great, so the, these funds, you know, aren't an allocation from the town of Waterbury, but they're federal funds that flow through the town of Waterbury. So that's why we're here today. Technically, they're um, <coughs> awarded to the town and subgranted to Downstreet. But we truly will, there is some administration work for the town, but really we will manage as much as we feasibly can throughout the project. Um, we're, I, just to share a little bit about the project, as we have applied for funds in our funding meeting, some of our board meetings are coming up, our first ones in April, um, the state is really excited about this housing project. It has been stated as one of the strongest applications in the state. Just with the location being in a designated downtown, um, the fact that we've not brought new units to Waterbury since like 2014, um, with the unit count, just the, the state and different funders are really excited about this project. And I'm actually hoping that this will create a stronger application for the BCDP funds as well. Um, if we can get all of our funding lined up this spring, we will be able to close the financial closing on this project by November or December of this year, uh, which is one of the fastest moving projects that we've been able to uh, move forward in years to. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I understand correctly, you're looking for us to approve uh, the, <coughs> using the town as a pass-through uh, and uh, our permission to apply for these funds. Yeah, and there is a resolution that we have to pass today um, for that as well. I have the resolution. Uh, the resolution simply says that uh, we're agreeing to be the pass-through entity, that we have an adopted municipal plan, which we do, and that I'm the contact person. Um, I have worked with VCDB funds in the past. Um, the, the funds flow through the town. There's no financial obligation on part of the town. Um, we, in essence, will draw down the funds from the state to pay to downstreet. So we're not, uh, we're never in a negative cash position because of this. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of administrative work, but it's pretty minimal and it's something that I can handle with Michelle Ryan, our bookkeeper. So pretty low burden in terms of the workforce, in terms of the work added, um, but a, a nice grant program if the funds can be yeah. awarded. And if it does trigger an audit, there's a way in this that we can put budget aside part of this award to pay for that audit as well. There's, um, there's a rule, you have to get uh, what's called a federal single audit if you have uh, an excess of uh, three quarters of a million dollars of federal funds that flow through you. Um, in your calendar year. So this could be a half million, but might not flow through in one year. Um, and we haven't hit that threshold in quite a while, um, but a federal single audit is not an uncommon thing, and it's, it's not, not really a big deal from our perspective, especially since the single audit review would essentially consist of just this one grant program and just the drawdown. So we're not talking a lot of work. Any further questions from the board? <coughs> if not, I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the resolution as Tom just described it. I make a motion to approve the resolution uh, for the uh, downstreet application for 51 South Main Street. <coughs> I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? We have a motion that's uh, been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> the motion passes. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Much. Thanks, Nicola. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Are you going to have everybody sign this?
Oh, we all have it. And quite Nicola, you just need the rest. We just want to don't need oh, you published comment here and on I'll the I'll need duties. a copy in a minute, so I'll get that from online. And just after. the copy with resolution is sufficient. Yeah, yeah, I don't need the hard copy. I can get that sent to me Great. for sure. Thank you. I'm going to have it come back by and I'll okay. sign it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, uh, I just want to add, we're very excited uh, and very pleased to hear that uh, this is one of the foremost projects uh, in the state and uh, very uh, much encouraged that this will move forward. Thank you. We are too. Okay. Uh, and does this need any further action on the part of the front uh, as uh, owners of the property? Uh, it does not. Okay. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons the, the funds would flow through the town and not EFUD is that the town has the municipal plan, um, and, and EFUD being a Tilted District wouldn't, wouldn't have that plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that explanation. All right, uh, next on the agenda we have housekeeping questions. <laughs> yes, that's mine. Who has the housekeeping questions? Maybe a little vague. Um, I just wanted to know if there's an opportunity to talk to the board about like the orders, for example. Mm -hmm. um, the Mondays that we have meetings, it's fairly self-explanatory. Bring them, and one of you all has the opportunity to sign them. But on the opposite weeks, um, there is a hope from the staff that folks get into the office fairly quickly to sign orders. Um, particularly if you see a message that says there's a check that needs, you know, is urgent, um, and just perhaps an ask when that email goes out about the orders, if somebody can reply just so we know it was received maybe throw in a, I can be there Tuesday at noon I can be there Wednesday at 5 you know whatever your availability is so we have some information to give to the bookkeeper about when when she can expect those orders to be signed and just managing those expectations um, well I think um, sorry to interrupt them just, um, go ahead I was just going to say, uh, uh, Danny already added uh, a item to the agenda about uh, planning, adding items to our next agenda. Maybe that we can, at the same time, identify who can schedule the time to come in and sign the orders, uh, so that it's sort of understood who's who's coming who's in. Because sure. uh, uh, I agree with you. It, it's. Uh, <laughs> It's a little bit uh, nerve-wracking, uh, not knowing who is going to come in and get those things signed so that the business of the town can move forward. Yeah. I also didn't know if Kane needed any explanation what this is all about. Uh, I mean, I think, I think you gave me a pretty good rundown. Okay, yeah, so every week on Monday the bookkeeper runs the accounts payable, payroll, it lives in this folder. We can't mail the checks until these orders are signed. So if, for example, we have a credit card payment in there, we run the risk, I think less so now perhaps than before, but we had one credit card with really tight mm -hmm. deadlines. And so that, that was always urgent. And there can be other things too. Somebody wants to buy a truck and they need the check or, gotcha. you know, who knows? The list could, is endless. Um, and we only need, I guess this is a different authorization to sign warrants, so we only need one signature, but we can touch on that a little later. Um, so that was all my housekeeping, unless somebody had a question for me about... And just so, Kane, that applies to any purchase we make, whether it's a million bucks or a buck. Mm -hmm. um, oh, thank you. And then something thank I'm looking into um, is an online system where um, orders could be approved online uh, and reviewed, but then any invoice would be would appear online. So if you had a question about an invoice or you, someone said to you, hey, how much should we pay for that truck? You can always call us, but you can dig it up on your own if you wanted to. So gotcha. be in theory a system that any member of the public could also look at and right. see what we're spending our money on. So it's just a matter of finding the right system and making sure it's affordable. But they certainly exist. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <coughs> So uh, if Danny wished to talk about that a little more in depth later, then that's then that's fine. That's great. But okay, uh, I was, uh, you know, part of uh, Danny's request. I think was to make that a standing item in the agenda, and I would just sort of uh, add a friendly amendment to that that, that we would also identify who is going to come in and sign off on the warrants, uh, so that. It reduces some of that sure. uh, question as to 
how is this going to move Who's forward? coming and when? That's yes. the big question on every Tuesday yeah. morning. <laughs> right. And then we just, unfortunately, the Tuesdays are days that I have to go into the office, and so yeah. it doesn't usually work for me. But uh, yeah. That's a good idea, though, Roger, to have it planned out. And then if somebody needs backup for any reason, I can reach out. But um, right. yeah, I like that. OK. Uh, and, and then I had another housekeeping question, and it's about orientation. Uh, both Alyssa and I received uh, orientation uh, through VLCT mm -hmm. uh, on a couple of different uh, online workshops uh, last year, which I thought were adequate. Um, it, uh, you know, didn't, not every town works the same uh, because of different management uh, scenarios. Uh, so not everything seemed to apply. And a lot of it was more on what you can't do because of open meeting laws than what you can do, <laughs> which you know was a little discouraging in some ways. Uh, but uh, the, um, I'm just wondering if the, those same orientations uh, are yeah, available. They're... Maybe you've already discussed it with Kane. Um, they were then. You know, you might want email. to have a little bit more orientation scheduled for our next meeting just to make sure that everyone's clear on what the ground rules are. Alyssa. Well, so on that note, this could be housekeeping and VLCT. We actually got postcards from VLCT, which I interestingly noticed were mailed to the municipal complex. I get other things from them mailed to my address which just brought up, I did not know until Valentine's Day of this year when I tried to distribute Valentine's that we have mailboxes in the <laughs> municipal offices. So in housekeeping, we have mailboxes in the municipal offices, even though I think, you do you give them our home address? Because I get stuff at my mm -hmm. house too. Um, although VLCT, I, I got an I think, email you know. today from VLCT that I have to do a survey. They may ask for home addresses. I have not completed I, the survey. Yeah. Um, it's probably gonna ask me for your names, your phone numbers, your emails, and your addresses. Yeah. That's pretty standard stuff. Yep. Um, so if you have any objections to that information being given to them, let me know before you leave tonight. Um, the mailboxes, for those of you on the select board, I don't think they're wildly used. You probably <laughs> find like a CT postcard or some sort of uh, flyer from a real estate agent or something of that nature in there. But um, if there was something that came urgent, you, you'd get an email from me. Mm -hmm. you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get it in your mailbox. Like a suggestion, um, I think would be a good thing for a lot of organizational thing maybe to dedicate one whole select board meeting to that. There's there's a lot of things that really go into the organ organization of the board. Anything from, you know, I know we're going to do some like conflict of interest and, and things like that, but in terms of like. You know, we haven't discussed for a while incl inclusion, and there's a whole bunch of issues. I know we may want to have some training again, you know, with Mary again, and, you know, because the only people on the board that would have been at that training would be myself and Danny. Uh, and uh, I, I just think dedicating one full meeting to that, you know, you could do. The, bit, the little bits of business, but the bulk of the meeting dedicated to a select board training. I think mm -hmm. that would be a good idea. Uh, Tom, I think you had mentioned uh, uh, inclusion training. Yeah, I want me to talk about that now or wait until the agenda item about next meeting? Uh, well, it's in front of us right now, so why don't you go ahead? So, I. Um, Trade it to me with Mary, and we had a pretty long Zoom meeting. And she's working on a proposal to me about an additional training. And the the question, and I discussed with her that um, extending it beyond the, the manager and select board department to all town staff. And then the question, and and. And the, comp and the question for you is, do you want to extend it further to include volunteer board members? Um, so it wouldn't be a, given the size, it wouldn't be a training, it would be a series. Mm -hmm. So we're, yeah. she's working on that scope for me um, to try to try to work through that and figure that out to bring a proposal to you. Um, and then the other part of it would be, um, and this would come pretty soon with a new employee handbook, is um, 
I think embedded in the handbook would be a requirement to have training for new hires within so many days yeah. of being hired. That's something that we would schedule and make sure happens, but I think it's a good way to make sure we're meeting our goals. I think that's a great idea, Tom. We discussed, I know, in the first round before Mary came in, possibly including <coughs> staff in some way. Mm -hmm. But then there was, was the immediacy we wanted to get things done. It was limited to the select board and just a, a few others. Um, you know, was you know the town manager, town clerk, etc. But I think that's a great idea. That the you know I know in USDA, you know we had required uh, diversity training every every year for <coughs> every staff member. So I think it's a good thing, you know, to, that people, you know, and I don't know how you want to do it. You may want to have some people have a shorter a shorter segment of it and other people, managers and stuff like that may want to have like, you know, the, the full. Yeah, and I, I told Mary that I really was looking for her guidance on how she thinks it's best to proceed, given she's done a lot of this. Um, and I told her tentatively, I'd like to plan for, you know, late April, May, somewhere in there. I'd rather make sure the scope is right and have some time. Mm -hmm. Danny, uh, you went through the initial training. Uh, what's your <coughs> take on this? Thanks. I did talk with Tom um, a couple of weeks ago and was really enthusiastic to extend it to at least the the full staff. Um, and I'm I I really feel strongly about that. I and Tom, I really appreciate what you're saying because part of the question is when we have new boards or new staff, you know, how how do we remedy keeping keeping the momentum going? So. Um, Mary might be able to point us to some resources that would be helpful for new staff in particular, but also maybe be able to talk with us about, you know, ongoing, ongoing work, knowing that the board does turn over, even if it's one person each year, um, and what the best way to, to do that is. So, um, I, I, she's spectacular at what she does and I think we're really lucky to have her and certainly enthusiastic about the full staff being there as well. All right, any other questions or input from the board? So Tom, uh, you'll have something to present to us at the next meeting? Maybe not the next meeting, but soon enough. Okay. It's being actively worked on. All right, thanks. Uh, any other housekeeping questions in front of us right now? Yeah, Alyssa. I didn't know if we had any updates on emails or just sharing contact information. I think I do at this point have everyone's contact information, but I don't know last year. I think we did it just like, again, we can send out information to everyone and just say like, hi, my preferred contact. I don't have a landline. I only have my cell phone, which I'm happy to give to fellow board members. Um, and you're free to call me on it. Please don't call Margaret at my work at the front desk, which happened once. Um, so anyway, I don't know if it's best for us to send that to Tom and have him distribute it or us to just individually send, but I know I was not great at it last year and I think it would be worthwhile early on um, or what folks preferred emails are. And if you want a town email, we can create that. Yeah. Um, I will <laughs> just note that uh, it's not uncommon for uh, select board members to be targeted uh, oh, okay. yeah. with, yes. with uh, spam and uh, malign intent. Uh, and I had my personal email hacked uh, this past year. Uh, and it's not a fun process to have to resolve. So I just, I mean, I think you should expect <coughs> that you're going to receive spam uh, and phishing uh, ex you know, emails. Uh, so just a uh, word to the wise, and so it, it, you may want to consider just using a town email for town business, uh, which will protect your other contacts. Um, just a suggestion. With public officials, and it's all out there, and the scammers know, and it's Anytime I get a suspicious, I know I've gotten Roger called. I used to get all the time. I get things from, from, from you all the time. time. <laughs> Chris VNs all the time, you know, mm -hmm. about stuff. And I just don't respond. I call. I, I get on the phone and yeah. call someone. That's smart. It's your best idea. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, let's uh, just 
before the end of the meeting, maybe I'll start it. Uh, I'll put that down uh, my personal phone. This is not for, for public uh, sharing with the public. It's just so that we can be in touch with uh, one another uh, whenever we need to. Does that sound okay? All right. Um, let's move on to um, approving the conflict of interest. Uh, Approve conflict of interest policy and rules of procedure. I have a question if that's all right, Roger. Yeah, go ahead. I had sent an email, but it was literally right before the meeting. Um, and I was just curious if if we as a town, I don't know if that would be the clerk or the town manager, but um how often we might check to ensure that the statutes that are referred to in these documents are up to date and that we're still in compliance. I don't know how often a state statute may or may not change, but it seems like um, without, we often will go decades without double checking and can get into hot water. So maybe we put it on that town rotating calendar every three years, every five years to just check on any referenced statute and make, sh make sure it's correct and in compliance. That's a good idea. It's a great idea. Um, I can tell you that we did work on the conflict of interest policy with the auditors, and they look at that every year. So I believe that one is is rock solid. All right. So uh, let's start with conflict of interest policy. Uh, we have it in front of us. Uh, the authority is uh, granted in 24 BSA uh, 229120. Um, and that the select board hereby adopts the following policy concerning conflicts of interest. And then it goes on for several articles, nine articles from there. And, and just to be clear, we did a little research on this. Um, mm -hmm. The conflict of interest policy has historically been adopted by the select board every year. I don't believe it needs to be. Once the select board adopts a policy, it remains a policy. Um, so we've kept it on the agenda <laughs> yeah. out of tradition, but I, I'm not aware of a statute that requires you to readopt it each year. I think why we're, we're probably doing really <coughs> this every year, we usually have some change in members, so that sure. I think would be the reason why you would reintroduce <coughs> it every year. Sure, I'm just saying it's not, it's not a requirement. Right. But it's tradition. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I will entertain a motion to approve the uh, policy for uh, 2023. I move to adopt the town of Waterbury conflict, conflict of interest policy as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? I think in the spirit of has been brought up this evening, my understanding is this applies to all bodies that, you know, our committees and things like that. And I will say I attended one subcommittee meeting and they said, we should have a conflict of interest call in I see. And I said, that's great. The town already has one and it actually applies to you. Um, so again, I think just in that thinking about like, I know we're probably going to have appointments in a couple meetings. Is this something we share regularly with boards? Just so I think we, because of open meeting yeah. law and additional training, are very aware of it. Um, but recognizing it might be more of a learning curve for other boards and just wanting to make sure that they're being informed. We can. And I would just say for the record, it's on the town website under plans, policies, and ordinances. Is that the tab? Mm, um, or procedures, for, plans. <laughs> yeah, far right on the bottom. Um, yeah, maybe this one. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion on the conflict of interest policy? Um, I just wanted to add, maybe just this printout of conflict of interest is just something we hand out at all um, boards and uh, at the beginning of every year might be a good idea because then. No yeah. one's going to ask if we have a conflict of interest policy. It's going to be in their hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll do. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of approving the conflict of interest <coughs> policy? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. We have approved the conflict of interest policy for 2023. 
Uh, next are the rules of procedure. Uh, this is uh, to conduct uh, the meetings in accordance with the Vermont Open Meeting uh, Law, 1 VSA uh, 310 to 314. Um, and then it goes on from there, as uh, printed before us. Any discussion on this one? Um, I'll make a motion to start to adopt the select board rules of procedure. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Second with Kane. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Alyssa. I would also just say out loud because I think this is one that like we do adopt every year, but I think in the spirit of what Kane just suggested, I think we should have a printed copy of these at all of our meetings. Um, and just because we actually have public attendance, which is so great to see, I just wanted to say out loud a couple of the high points just for the board and for everyone just around like, obviously they have to be open to the public per open meeting law. At the beginning of the meeting, there's five minutes for public comment. We're allowed to increase that if there's things um, that if you'd like to be on an agenda, you contact the town manager, select board chair, or town clerk to request that. Um, we follow the order of the agenda, um, and you know the chair runs the meeting, and you know comments on relevant agenda topics up to five minutes at the discretion of the chair. And I guess I would just say thanks, Roger, for being willing to chair, and I think hopefully we as a board can support you in doing a good job running a meeting for everyone where folks can be heard, but also we move business forward. And it's constantly a challenging balance to do, but just taking the opportunity to say, that's my um, hope or intention as we adopt this. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, and I'll just follow up by saying, I, I don't pretend to be uh, the world's leading expert on uh, Robert's rules or the uh, slightly amended Robert's rules that the, the, uh, that, uh, the state of Vermont uh, abides by. Um, so if uh, you have any issues, uh, whether it's this or anything else, I invite uh, all the board members or members of the public to, uh, to address them with me. And uh, we'll try to uh, keep improving uh, in the conduct, conduct of the meetings. How do you feel about these, specifically these two documents, just being on the wall or somewhere in Ooh. this room? Mm. Because I don't attend every board meeting, yeah. and I don't believe you attend every board meeting. I mean, I can circulate them to the board chairs, but it, well, it also idea. states that it's supposed to be available at the meeting, which it is via the web, but I could get a couple of... Uh, Frames yep. and put them up. I mean, I'm not yeah. scotch tape on the wall, but <laughs> something kind of nice. Maybe it would be a good idea to have a small bulletin board with a couple of, yeah. of you know, maybe even it's a great more idea, information. A yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do you post agendas for all the boards? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, yes. Could we <laughs> could we simply add this? To the back of each, to the to the to the back of each agenda, so you're not posting. Well, I could, but we have to print all those for and put them up around town okay. too. So it's that would that would be a lot. Yeah, to, a to lot print on each one. More trees. Um, <laughs> yeah. anyway, Supporting just, the. I like the uh, board 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 I can just grab a small board 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 board. Board. Okay, great. And that and well, not diminishing the idea of calling attention to them to the board chairs, but having them available in this room where. Mm -hmm. How much all of our board meetings are held anyway? Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. Okay. And they are. I was <coughs> also going to ask. You mentioned it, uh, but they are uh, on the website. Yeah. Okay. They are. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, you have to remind me. Uh, I know we had a motion and a second. Uh, did we uh, pass this? No. Next no, no. Okay. <laughs> All in favor of uh, passing the uh, select board rules of procedure, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Any abstentions? <laughs> All right. The rules of procedure have uh, been passed. And uh, just, okay, yeah, that's the other thing. Let's move forward. Uh, authorization to sign warrants. What do we 
so that. you would need to make a motion authorizing at least one select person to sign warrants. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's been done here for a long, long time. Um, some towns decide they want more than one person. Some towns decide that they want the entire board to approve it at a public meeting. Um, I think the model we have now works fine generally. Mm -hmm. Which is to have every uh, select board member authorized, authorized to sign, to sign but just needing one mm -hmm. so we can print one. a check. Right. Okay. Uh, I will entertain the motion. I make a motion to uh, authorize all select board meetings to sign warrants, but only one has to sign per occurrence of each warrant. Do I hear a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion on this? I'll just uh, agree with Tom that I think uh, this, uh, the system that we've got works well, uh, <coughs> and we've been able to find at least one board member uh, to come in and get these things signed so that the business can move forward, uh, which is most important. Uh, does provide a level of oversight uh, from the board uh, on all expenditures of the town, so I'm in favor of it as well. Um, can I also let you all know, perhaps you don't know, but you can still sign warrants electronically. <coughs> so the Edward Farr Utility District, they sign um, the warrants without actually coming into the office. Yeah. If you want to see the bills, you need to come into the office. Well, um, we used to do that during yeah, for through, COVID. Through COVID yeah. You would just scan scan mm -hmm. the applicable changes <coughs> and send them into the town yeah. clerk. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is another option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, having only done it twice, <coughs> I, I sort of enjoyed uh, just yeah. matching up yeah. <laughs> the, the one paper <laughs> and the bill. <laughs> yeah, okay, that one works. Yeah. The next one. Uh, it's a little bit easier to do in person, perhaps, than online, yeah. although I have not tried it online. Yeah. It's easier in person, but <laughs> you know, I've done it a bunch of times. During COVID, I did it a bunch of times, you know, on the scan. But mm -hmm. It gives us that option in case, you know, something happens and we need to, something else to be signed. Right. And so your motion was uh, that it can be done either in person or online. Is that the way I understand it? I didn't make that motion, but I can. It's a friendly amendment. I, I think it's state law. I think Karen's right. That's what you're telling yeah, us. Yeah, is that by we don't, don't need need it. It. We're authorized yeah. that the warrant signing could be done hard copy or. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of passing the um, uh, authorization to sign warrants, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The authorization to sign warrants is approved. Newspaper of record. Currently, the uh, Times Argus is our uh, newspaper of record. Uh, previous to that, it was Waterbury Roundabout. But uh, since it's no longer printing a uh, hard copy, uh, state law as I understand it, precludes us from having them as our exclusive uh, newspaper of record. It has to be a printed newspaper. Um, so uh, we have, I'll open up the discussion. Uh, and I'll also note that uh, one of our constituents, uh, Bruce King, uh, sent a uh, email out uh, within the past two days asking if we could uh, have the Valley Reporter, uh, which is published in Waitsfield, as our newspaper of record, uh, since it does cover local school <coughs> activities. Um, and uh, I did uh, respond to Bruce, and I contacted the publisher at the Valley uh, Reporter today. Um, their circulation is about 3,100. Including about 50 households uh, that subscribe uh, in Waterbury. Uh, and they also put it on the, the stands at Shaw's uh, Village Market and uh, Maplewood down at the entrance of the Ice Center there. Um, so it does, it, it is also here. Uh, I also, uh, just out of curiosity, put in a call to 
uh, the Times Argus to find out what their circulation for in the town of Waterbury is, and they're going to try to put together those figures for us, uh, but couldn't get them to me before this meeting. I have a question about um, what that what the relationship with the newspaper looks like when it's our paper of record. We still pay to put in those public notices each time. Is that correct? Yeah. We still pay to put in the notices. Um, <laughs> I want to add there is the Secretary of State publishes news, newspapers of record on their websites. So you can also use a statewide publication. And there's a little nuance to the law. Their website was down all day today, so I couldn't really research this when it came up in mm -hmm. detail. Um, so I can't, 100, I, I can't tell you today with 100% confidence that a newspaper that just does a weekly would satisfy the legal requirement. I think it would, but I can't tell you that with 100% confidence as of today. Mm -hmm. um, there are some legal notices that we have to publish in consecutive weeks, bond vote for example. I'm not aware of any that we have to publish in consecutive days. So I think a weekly would be, would be fine. Um, it is nice to have daily publications because um, an example was EFUD passed uh, updated water and sewer recently and, and to some extent the, the legal clock to a challenge starts ticking when you publish, and that would also apply to things like DRB hearings. So sometimes it's nice to call up on a Monday, and if they can get the notice in on a Wednesday, you've met your requirement, and, and that clock, that 60-day clock might start a few days sooner. Mm -hmm. um, so it is nice to have the daily on occasion. I can find out for you if it's a requirement. I just didn't get that done today. Uh, Mike and then Elizabeth. <coughs> As much as I love when we had the water roundabout available, but that's not an option now in their current state. I'd be very opposed, not, not that the Valley Reporter is not a good paper. I know they do a lot of uh, Harvard sports, they do school board meetings, but I think people who read newspapers, they're going to read. Even by those numbers, I would think this, the Times Argus would be, especially older readers who either get the, used to get either the, the Free Press or the Times Argus. I think most people want to marry because it's a little bit more Washington County centric than the Burlington Free Press. I think that's best justification. You know, if we have to have, and plus as Tom said, I think it's a good reason to have the availability of a daily. So I'd be opposed as much as I like the one, the Valley Reporter as a paper itself, I don't think it's the best means for it to be a paper of record. Okay. Alyssa. My question was for Tom or Karen if they know, but it's a technicality, which is around having an alternate, because I'm recalling, I mean, I believe the then Waterbury <coughs> record, which was a weekly, um, was the paper record for many years, and I believe the Times Argus was an alternate for those quick turnarounds <coughs> things. So. Assuming that law has not changed, I think you could have a weekly yeah. and a daily. Um, so I was wondering about some combination that we might consider that would give us that flexibility. Um, I thought the, the school coverage was an interesting. You know, I think like the I hadn't thought of it. So Bruce, who I see mm -hmm. is here on Zoom, bringing it up, appreciated it. Um, obviously, we abut literally many other towns. So then it was like, oh well, should it be the Star Reporter? I don't think so. Obviously, but. The fact that it does have the, the shared school district with the Valley um, and Duxbury and Moortown and that it covers all of those and that we're on that school board as well, I thought was interesting just in terms of who might be subscribing. Um, it's, I will say, a modest subscription fee as opposed to the Times Argus, which personally I don't subscribe, just you know, from a cost perspective. Um, so I'm open, but I think the alternate might be a good way to at least acknowledge some nuance if we choose to go one direction or the other. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. I was just going to say, you know, we, we don't really want to go with the Stowe newspaper, and that kind of leaves us optionless as far as readers go. We're kind of pinned with the Times Argus and the Valley Reporter, uh, unless unless you want to go free press, but I don't remember the last time I picked up a <laughs> free press. <laughs> the staff have yeah. concerns right now? Uh, I, I have no concerns with having an, alter an alternate newspaper right here at all. It seemed to work well when we had the Waterbury record, as Alyssa mentioned, that was a weekly. Um, so I wonder, um, I like the idea of supporting, you know, the Valley uh, paper, but also understand, 
stand the need for possibly a daily and a quicker turnaround. Um, and I'm curious if like, if we had, if we chose, if the board unanimously chose to go forward and we went back, would we be able to double check and then adjust as needed? Or would we get ourselves into a weird pickle if we tried to do that without confirming? I mean, I can't imagine that rule changed, but. I don't believe it changed. No, you can still have a rule change too. Uh, Bruce, uh, I'll just recognize that you're uh, online here. If you wanted to uh, contribute to this conversation, we'd like to hear what you have to say. Sure, I'm not very Zoom literate, so I'll do my best. Um, can anyone hear me there? Yes. yes. yes All right, cool. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, so, I, I do think that there's a certain value in having a newspaper that already um, reports on our school district and uh, more than just the sports coverage that the Times Argus um, provides for the Hardwood Sports. The the Valley Reporter does comprehensive school district um, reporting. And I also see the value in having a daily provide a quicker response so town government doesn't get slowed down just by waiting for a weekly publication. So I, th I think the best course of action is uh, from what I've heard is to maybe um, choose the Valley Reporter as the primary and then have an alternate of the time Argus. So when um, town staff needs to get something out quicker, they have that option to do that. And um, I would also add a comment about that the War Waterbury Roundabout is kind of our primary journalistic out outlet, even though they are a digital outlet of continuing to post notices on the Waterbury Roundabout uh, to get better outreach to uh, folks that may only be subscribing to a digital journalism outlet. Thank you. And uh, just a question uh, for the staff. I'm um, sorry. Lisa. Yes. Lisa. Can I have your comment, even though I'm here trying to cover the meeting at the same time? <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, that was. Come up, to Lisa. Of, yeah, please, come up. please come up. I was just going to say you know, <laughs> uh, that we are, of course, working with you uh, and, uh, to ask the staff of, about how we're currently, what the current arrangement is, but you can probably answer that better than Right. Um, I'm Lisa Scalodi, and I'm the editor of the Waterbury Roundabout online site. Um, and it was the Waterbury Reader that was the paper of record last year, along with the Times Argus, that we produced with them, and then that ended in September. Um, so um, I understand the need to have it, your notices in a print publication. I get that. That's the, the, the world that we live in right now. Um, but if you're going to, I would like to just throw out the option if you're considering having two newspapers and you're going to be using the Times Argus to, if you have a, a print paper as your primary, have the local Waterbury paper, which also covers the school district. I'm sitting here thinking, maybe I don't have to cover the school board Wednesday night, but if we're, I'll just let the Valley Reporter cover it. Um, you know, I'm doing that too. And we have... Um, 2,040 some people getting our newsletter every week. That went out this morning, a little late of a crazy weekend. But um, we have somewhere between four and 5,000 people on our website every week. Um, and that's around the population of our town. Um, I think we have a pretty engaged readership. We have a lot of people on our website reading the town stories, the school stories, et cetera. Um, we have made room, and I do give Tom and Bill beforehand some credit. Some of the public notices have been coming to us. There have been public hearings that, that have happened in the town. Like tonight's public hearing for Downstreet was on our website mm -hmm. um, in an admission that, well, we'll put this in the Times Argus, but if we want people to see it, we need to put this on the roundabout too, because that's where people are looking. Um, it's also a place where the town can advertise for employment ads. We do have, that's not a legal notice because you advertise widely for jobs. So those go into a lot of different places. So I appreciate that. Um, one of the reasons that um, the bill to change this didn't happen last year is that newspapers, print newspapers, talked about how important the advertising from these ads is to them. Um, well, I'm getting none of that advertising right now. Um, so our main source of income right now is is 101 people giving us money every month um, that are readers. So I'm at the point with this where unless we get advertising, we sort of need to be getting funding from a multitude of sources. 
um, subscribers are one source, but we need to start really truly working on businesses and organizations <coughs> seeing us as a place to advertise to support us that way so we actually have that revenue um, in order for us to get paid. So um, anyway, I would just throw that out there as an option if you are thinking about if you're having more than one outlet, what's the mix, how do you meet the requirements, and how do you actually get the public to notice the public notices. Um, you know, no offense to the Valley Reporter. They're, I was on the phone three times with them today. I, they're my friends. <laughs> when it was about things with the schools that we're covering together. Um, you know, they, they do a good job. Their focus is that the towns in the Valley, um, and we're covering a lot of the same stuff that way too. But as far as whether readers in Waterbury are reading the Valley Reporter, I'm not sure. I mean, how many right. of you read the Valley Reporter every week? Do you even know where to get it? I do. do you go to their website? I know you know to get it, right? Totally. right? Yeah, oh, that's right. You were listening. <laughs> that was a quiz. <laughs> it's online too, so you know it's just a consideration. And you know, I don't know what your budget is for this sort of thing. How many places you want to be able to spend your money um, when it comes to that? I know um, our ads are a lot cheaper than um, the Times Argus, mm -hmm. so um, for whatever that's worth, I just want to throw that out there to say, don't forget about us because. You know, I'm here, we've got UVM students trying to cover things as well, and uh, we're trying to keep that going. And there are a lot of people paying attention. Right. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Anne. Uh, Anne? I just want to say, as an old newspaper person myself, I don't get print newspapers anymore, and... I get my local news either on WDEV or the roundabout. Um, and I rely on, on that. And I get all my other news online, whether it's the Times. I don't do the Times Argus. I do the New York Times. I do the, I do the CBC. And I, and I do the uh, Boston papers all online. I'm just so discouraged by print advert uh, the print papers the way they've been consolidated and shrunk down and stuff but that's just an old newspaper woman's two cents but I I really think if you can include the roundabout I think you'd reach I I don't know anybody who takes newspapers anymore but that's just me Thank you, Ann. So um, to, to clarify, we by state law have to have a print newspaper as our paper of record. That does not preclude us from still purchasing advertising space in the Waterbury online um, you know, edition, knowing that that's where most of our residents get their news. But we cannot choose uh, the roundabout as our paper of record. All right, we've heard a lot of testimony. Does anyone feel like we need a motion? Mike? I make a motion to have the uh, Times Argus be the pa uh, print paper of record with the Waterbury record be, Waterbury Roundabout being the ultimate. Okay, uh, do I have a second? I do not have a second. Uh, you're looking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm perplexed. perplexed. But I feel like you need to make a second before I, was I, like, I can second it for the purposes <laughs> of discussion. Okay, now we have a second. Now we can discuss. Okay. Can so be as to what I just said? Can a non-print paper be the alternate? I don't know the answer to that. Not legally, but you can certainly tell us that any legal notice that goes in the official right. paper of record, we should also put in the Waterbury Roundabout. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't want, go ahead, Alyssa. No, go ahead. Uh, so my question is just, mm -hmm. are we making the motion for a paper, or should we not include that as an alternate since it's not actually a legal alternate? 
That's a, I'm friend, I, I, I would amend my amendment, amendment to just have the Times Argus be the paper of record. Just say withdraw and then we can right, start again. Just I would draw the uh, uh, original motion and I reintroduce a new motion to make the Times Argus be the Waterbury paper of record. Okay, with no, al no official alternate. I'll uh, yeah, wait for a second. They're tough to find these days. Uh, we had a lot before. No seconds. I guess just in the spirit of discussion, well, I just want to thank you, Lisa, for your comments and say Bruce, to his credit, in his email immediately started with, make the water around about the paper of record, and we went through state law and why that wasn't possible, and I did it also <coughs> just at our previous meeting, we have asked. Um, to not for all public notices, but to try and work to include the roundabout. And I think we should, regardless of after we make this formal mm -hmm. newspaper of record, I would, if it's amenable to the board, offer that we also make a formal motion to instruct staff to post all notices in the roundabout separately. Yeah. Um, with the question on the table with regards to the actual printed papers. Yes. Times Argus, it feels like needs to be in the mix for the daily purpose. My question is, is there, does the board feel there points taken about roundabout really should be? Is it worth putting Valley Reporter as an alternate for some reason? Or do we think that gives the wrong impression because we want roundabout to really be the alternate? It, it's semantics. I'm not trying to that's you know, push reason. them, but that's, that's kind of my question on the table. Why I did it. And also, plus, if you look at the numbers for the Valley Reporter, they're very small. Right. So I, I don't know the reason to have the Valley Report or other than they're a very nice we're organization. But but even we just said none of them, none of us read the Valley Report. Well, there are five here. King. Right. Uh, uh, and then it did do we have to have an alternate? If we have the Times Argus, which prints daily, do we need an alternate? No. Do no. I don't want to. So then you can second Mike's motion. Uh, uh, well, no one. I'm just. <laughs> It's still sort of open discussion uh, until we uh, find a uh, motion and a second. Um, all right, so does anyone uh, want to restate uh, a motion and find a second? Someone else. <laughs> Maybe they'll be luckier. Come on, we can do this, folks. Uh, Mike, well, one more time. The most recent motion was um, to have the Times Argus as the Waterbury's paper of record, correct? Right. Right. Yes, and we're waiting for okay. a second. I will, I will second the motion. Thank you. All right, we have a motion to make the Times Argus our uh, newspaper of record. And we have a second. Any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The Times Argus is our newspaper of record. Now, uh, what uh, Alyssa had just introduced was uh, to also direct the board uh, to also post uh, um, notices in the Waterbury Roundabout. Direct town staff. Oh, to direct town staff, okay. And you don't need a motion, we can just do that. Yeah. Uh, is, yes. We don't need a motion. Uh, if everyone, if everyone, that's consensus on that, I think we, we're all okay with that. If not, please let me know. I just said, if Karen wouldn't mind putting an explicit note in the minutes, that just is, I know it's already been in there last week, but so that it's there again, so we can tell you. All right. And then tell the in the minutes. Uh, I'll just also note that uh, if we uh, so decide, we can also uh, advertise in other newspapers, including the Valley Reporter, right? Roger, this is a, I would love to, if the Times Argus gets back to you with that, those numbers, I'd be super curious to see it, um, if you do get that information uh, and pass it along. Sure. I'll be happy to uh, inform you at our next meeting if I don't get the opportunity to do so before <coughs> Okay, thank you. Um, let's move forward. Authority for tax uh, anticipation borrowing. Uh, as I understand it, uh, there may be a circumstance that we uh, will need to borrow uh, funds uh, before uh, taxes become due and received in August. And this is uh, 
and the authority for uh, the town to do that. Uh, Tom, maybe you can further explain. Sure, we have a couple, um, despite having substantial reserves, the town has some pinch points for cash, as does EFUD. Um, mm -hmm. So historically, there's a request before the select board and then for EFUD shortly thereafter. Um, in essence, for the town to borrow from the utility district, the utility district to borrow from the town. Last year, that was set at 2%. Um, EFUD borrowed money from the town at 2% last December for a few weeks. Um, that's about it. And then EFUD again borrowed money from the town um, for essentially uh, about the month of February for three or four weeks mm -hmm. at 2%. Uh, the town, EFUD paid the town interest that went into the town's um, tax stabilization fund. Historically, the rate has been quite low, around half the prime rate, because uh, mm -hmm. the prime rate's been very low. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's um, it's favorable for, for both the town and EFUD because we're borrowing from each other less than we could borrow from a bank. Right. Um, if, I'd ever, if there ever wasn't sufficient cash in a municipality, then I'd just simply go to a bank for short-term cash. Um, so right now, the prime rate is 7.75%, which is something that I haven't seen in my adult lifetime. I think the last time the prime was at seven and three quarters was um, maybe in the 90s, late 80s, yeah. it's been a while. Um, we're, we're still in a good position. We could still um, borrow at, at well below the prime rate. Um, but I would propose that this year the, the internal borrowing rate should be um, you can pick your number, but I think it should be in the range of three to four. Mm -hmm. um, I think three and a half is, is pretty consistent with our past and that we're usually around half the prime rate uh, in that range. So if you have a particular feeling, but my recommendation is three and a half, um, and I propose the same for EFUD. Um, EFUD has cash pinches uh, just before bills are paid, um, and the town has cash pinches around the statutory dates when we have to pay school taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to do as much of that internally as we can. If we have to pay interest, let's pay ourselves. Mike, this is different from the article that we passed. Um, you know, we don't we pass it. Uh, tax anticipation. I, I, know, I don't think we get into the weeds as to what percent. So is that what we're doing here? That's authority for external borrowing. Okay. Yeah. So what the what the this town is for internal borrowing? Yeah, town meeting day. There's authority for external borrowing for tax anticipation note if needed, and then there's also authority to borrow for public works equipment. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. then if we need to do a formal long-term bond vote, that's a separate, complete separate item. Thank you. Uh, and just point of clarification, uh, who? Uh, or from what fund are we borrowing the money internally? Um, EFUD is various investment funds, and so the town would borrow from, from EFUD's reserves, and mm -hmm. EFUD would typically borrow from the town tax stabilization fund. Okay. All right. Any further questions? Yeah, Alyssa. There's no question. I was going to offer a motion. Okay, go ahead. Um, I move that the select board authorize intermunicipal <coughs> lending between the town of Waterbury and the Edward Farrar Utility District with an interest rate of 3.5% at the discretion of the municipal manager. Do I have a second? Okay. All right. Uh, Kevin first. <laughs> That's just because my right ear is a little bit better than my left. Um, <coughs> All right, so uh, any further discussion on this? I'm sorry for a second. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we've approved the authority for internal borrowing uh, at 3.5% uh, or at the discretion of the town municipal manager. And Senator Mitchum, you just said EFUD actually just paid the town back, right? With our ARPA money, ironically. EFUD, EFUD um, had owed the town $110,000, and part of that is operating, and part of it was 
EFUD just bought a new truck. Um, the town, um, on town meeting day, the $150,000 payment to EFUD was approved. The town meeting can technically be challenged. Right. Um, that being said, this was not an external purchase, so I moved the town's $150,000 to EFUD. That check cleared, EFUD paid the town back with interest. <coughs> um, and I, I took the liberty of doing that because um, it's like just the right thing to do for both municipalities in the end. And since it's internal cash, mm -hmm. it's I didn't commit it, so outside organizations wouldn't receive any funding until that 30 days is passed. All right. All right, uh, let's move on to uh, the appointment of the tree warden. Any information on this? Yes, our, we need a tree warden. Mm -hmm. Our tree warden is Steve Lotspeech. Uh, despite his party, Steve is going to stay on for two more weeks. Um, as tree warden? <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> as Steve Lotspeech in all his glory. Okay, yeah, the, the, the rain. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The rain. Um, Two more weeks of tree warden. Right? We re I believe we really should have a tree warden and a deputy. Um, the tree warden duties come into play um, when there's a dangerous tree and someone has to make a call about taking it down. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be a little bit contentious, especially if a homeowner has a nice tree in front of their house um, and wants to keep it. Mm -hmm. um, Nice to have someone who's got that title and some training that can go with it. And VLCT does trainings for these sort of things. Um, Steve, let me know that uh, Mike Lachavio, who I have not yet, but he maintains our uh, a lot of our gardens and areas in the in the summer, has expressed an interest. Um, I would also suggest that um, one of our public works crew should be the deputy tree warden in case they've got to make a call. Do you have an individual in mind? Uh, I believe that should be Bill Woodruff. <coughs> Do you it's, know if he's willing to serve? Uh, I actually haven't had that conversation with him yet, but it's not, we're not adding to his burden per se, mm -hmm. so I think it's pretty safe to appoint him. He's a team player. Okay. Yeah. Eligible? Is there a residency requirement? Not aware of any residency requirements. And, in fact, uh, I know in other towns there have been non-residents, so. Do you happen to know if uh, <coughs> Steve has uh, talked to Michael Chavio and whether he'd be willing to accept the position? I believe he has. Mike, is on, Mike volunteered to Steve. Okay. okay. Uh, they don't, I don't think they need a decision tonight, do they? They don't need a decision tonight because Steve has two more weeks. Ah. So you can take your time on this one. Yeah, next, next Until uh, <coughs> April? Third? Okay. Um, maybe if uh, you can just uh, make sure that the two candidates are, uh, are prized, that uh, we're interested in them serving, uh, unless uh, the board has any further discussion on the matter. Will do. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, I think we've finished the, the main public agenda. Um, and then there's uh, the, uh, actually, uh, there's the item that uh, Danny added, which is uh, the uh, next meeting. Uh, and so, <coughs> Danny, would you like to address that now? So knowing that we're not going to have everything ready for two weeks from now, each meeting, I just think it's it would be prudent and helpful for us as a group um, to maybe, A, look at the parking lot, see if there's anything that is pressing or that we're ready to move up. Um, maybe knowing whether we have a heavier or light agenda in front of us. Also to hear from Tom as to whether he knows already that there's anything. Um, and then to hear from individual Slack board members. Um, of course, you know, it will evolve, but I just, it, I think it'll help us be looking forward, especially as we establish those goals that we've been working on. Um, so I think one thing, um, is we just talked about the tree warden. So making sure that that's on the four, three agenda, um, and then looking at the parking lot, I'm curious if there are any of these that are coming up that, you know, need to be on that next agenda or it would be prudent of us to put on there. Um, mm -hmm. Tom, do you have input on that? Yeah, I've got a few items for the next agenda. Okay. Um, so the first is uh, appointment of acting planning and zoning director. Uh, 
we do need a, at least an acting director by law. Um, we are interviewing for Steve's replacement on Friday. Uh, we have some excellent candidates, so we may have a better understanding in a week or so of where that where that's headed. But nonetheless, there's likely to be a period where we need an acting director. Um, so that would be likely an item for the next agenda. Um, it could also be Steve on a part-time basis until we find a full-time replacement. But mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's some conversation there that will likely be tied up with a bow for two weeks from now. Yeah. Steve will be serving uh, through the 3rd of April? Uh, through uh, the end of this month. March 31st. Yeah. All right. So perhaps so we, we need could, a motion now to... Uh, we can go the weekend without it. Okay. So um, on a similar note, Steve is also our appointee to uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. So he's, uh, his appointment actually expires in July, and he's willing to uh, stay in that role. Um, so presumably when there's a new hire, we'd make that appointment too, but you can also have an alternate. And you might want to consider that, and that was something for the next agenda I would put in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> other items for next agenda was uh, presentation of quarterly financials. And then with that, I also, and that would take a bit of time, um, trying to work on that presentation to make sure it's detailed enough but concise enough. Um, and then also, uh, as part of that would be, I'd give an overview of the investment funds and where, they, where they're at, where they finish the year, uh, some of the major issues there. I need those. Uh we need all those races approved, too, because one of them's in May. And they've all been patiently waiting to hear from me because I put them off through the month of March. I guess leaf peeper pieces. Yeah, all those leaf peepers, 100 for 100. Circus Smirkus is something new. That Clyde Budamore parade and the gravel grinder, which is in May. I think you and I got the email about the gravel grinder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that was uh, one that I was going to uh, say that we should... Uh, definitely approve uh, or address at the next meeting because uh, they have to do their planning and uh, I don't did we approve uh, the uh, Little League no. parade? So no. he's, gonna come back. <coughs> he's prepared to come on April 3rd. Okay. Right. Yeah, we, I, I agree with so that. Maybe we move all those up to the 4-3 agenda from the parking lot. Yeah. And then I'd love to take this opportunity also for those who are watching or in the room and for Lisa. Um, uh, I know there was some trouble with the website getting the agenda up last weekend. And I found out from Karen that only 158 folks in Waterbury subscribe to the select board agenda notifications via email. And I know a lot of folks sometimes say they feel surprised about agenda items or they might feel blindsided or they didn't know it was upcoming. So I really want to get the word out. Um, that, that if you just sign up on the website, it's a really easy link. You'll get the agendas, you know, exactly what the select board is going to be addressing. You can reach out um, about the items. And, um, you know, we, we really want the public to feel informed and engaged. And there's such a simple way to, to take ownership. So I just wanted to say it, wanted to make sure, you know, it was getting out there. That's for you. Everyone hear that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mike. The other thing that's kind of time sensitive, and I don't know if Tom's spoken to Gary about this, usually by early, I think early, beginning of May, we have to approve our local emergency management plan. <coughs> and that's he, that's he, on the to-do list that's being worked on. Um, okay. With Neil's taking the But we're going to have to approve it and stuff like that, so if... If, if it's in approvable stage for for next meeting, you know, there's only going to be one more meeting before the deadline that that has to be in mm -hmm. state. And this is for what again? I'm sorry. Local, it, it's it's for this for much emergency management. Okay. We have we have the emergency <coughs> management director submits for the municipality. It will probably be 
for the most part, pretty similar to what it's been the last you know few years. Mm -hmm. But they have to renew <coughs> yearly a, lo a local emergency management plan, they call it a LEMP, um, for, for the municipality. And I assume it's, it's going to be, a lot for Gary, it's probably going to be cha some change in names and positions, especially with what we, what we have now. But that's a requirement for Vermont Emergency Management. Okay. So do you want to do new board appointments on the 17th of April, question. or do you want to do it on the 1st of May? They expire on April 30th. So I guess we could do it May 1st. So this is uh, new people coming to boards like the Conservation Commission and the Planning Commission. Um, you do already have three applicants for the seat on the planning. So you're probably going to want to interview those people, I would assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to know now what when you want to when you see that being done, so I can plan accordingly. I need to advertise for some vacancies too. Right. That was my question on the CBRPC for Steve. Is should that just be lumped in with? I guess it's a little different, but should that just go with the other appointments whenever we choose to do them? Mm -hmm. um, if you want to do that on the 17th, it will certainly take up with some time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Seems like with the financials for the for the third, maybe that would be better to use on the 17th for the. Right. Well, it's either the 17th or uh, the 1st of May is, a, is what Karen's suggesting. Um, yeah, I just assume do them on the 17th uh, if, if that gives us enough time to recruit the candidates. I know that you know, finding volunteers is not the easiest thing to do, and we want to make sure that people know that there's an opportunity mm -hmm. and uh, give them time to put their names uh, in the ring. Luckily, Many of the people who are expiring have already voiced uh, that they'd like to be reappointed. There's one gentleman that would not like to be reappointed, so that leaves a vacancy on the tree committee. Um, but the rec committee, we know, is scarcely, you know. We do have a new uh, uh, person that's <coughs> raised their hand to, uh, to join that. OK. Are they emailing me? Uh, I told her that she should, okay. um, but I will make sure that she does. Okay. Well, um, I'm happy to try to get as many names on the agenda for the 17th as I can, and I guess May 1st yeah. would be a, a backup. If, right. You know, Let's do it that way. That okay. to me. Get them started, and then if we still have uh, further appointments to do on the 1st, we can do yeah. those. Yeah. Right, or if we want to deliberate her. I think it just gives us that flexibility by starting on the 17th. Yeah. It goes on. Okay. Okay. Um, and thank you, Karen, for managing yeah. the many terms. And it's on the homepage of the website, right? Um, um, the appointment stuff. I think it's in the announcement. There's, there there might be something in the news, but um, no, I haven't. I wanted a date before. I oh, really, before like, you. I haven't put on front porch. Okay, but I you haven't talked to this guy. I haven't, I haven't really pushed anything <coughs> until so. I had a date. I wanted right. a deadline. <laughs> so April seventeenth, uh, with uh, April uh, May first as a backup uh, if needed. Awesome. Um, and one other thing, uh, Tom was just noticing today that uh, it started out at about 25 degrees and ended the day close to 50 degrees, which means that mud season is not far off. And uh, last year, uh, one of my first uh, public comments that I received as a select board member was the atrocious uh, conditions of the roads uh, and what we're going to do about it. Um, and I know that uh, you and Woody are addressing this. So I was just wondering if we might get an update on that uh, next next meeting. Yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Woody's also pretty close on the proposed paving plan that he would uh -huh. bring to you, and he'd bring you probably double the budget worth of roads and <laughs> some recommendations within that. But that, that's how it works. I thought the budget was already approved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not suggesting we blow it. I'm just suggesting that he's going to have a whole list for you. Okay. Um, and then he can give you an update on the dirt roads. And um, you know, we're hoping uh, after all the gravel that was put on Perry Hill last year that it's not so bad this year. Uh huh. Um, but I think we're going to have to see what comes. Okay. If that can go on the agenda, I think uh, it could increase uh, the number of people uh, tuning into the meeting and uh, it would be timely. <laughs> Uh, update. And you're saying we're next week? Or for, uh, for the next meeting, yeah. 
Are we mentioning the conversation we had earlier today as well for an advance of the 17th? <coughs> you can, sure. <laughs> Cat's out of the bag. What's up? Um, we have a um, we have a local nonprofit business that has um, appealed. They've asked for tax exemption. The listers have not given them tax exemption status, so they will be coming to the BCA. Hmm. And the select board is a member of the BCA. So my earlier conversation with Tom and Liz Schlegel, the chair of the BCA, was to conduct that meeting on the 17th <coughs> at 6 o'clock. So it's in advance of the select board meeting. And we'll have some plenty of communication on this one before you. The, the statute related to, uh, I'll be pretty open about this, the statute related to your ability to exempt a nonprofit from taxes is uh, really gray. Ooh. And the case law. <laughs> That's not a good color. And the case law is really gray. And so uh, Joe McLean is going to put together a legal opinion about the specific facts of this one. Mm -hmm. to, to give you some guidance. Uh, uh, including but, precedence? Including precedence. Because uh, that's, that's where I go, <coughs> well, in, in the gray zone. But I, I warn you about this one. It's going to be um, it's going to be a meeting that's going to require some time and conversation to well, get through that, uh, to make sure you make the right call. And, and a lot of you. There's 14 members of the Board of Civil Authority and then the five of you. Uh -huh. and then so that will be tacked day. on to the meeting on the 17th? Yeah, that's the hope right now. Typically, they, you know, an hour are we starting Okay, all right, we'll, we'll prepare. Do we think an hour is sufficient? Gird ourselves for that one? Well, yeah, I hope so. <coughs> you, okay. have an, you have an hour to... They could recess for the... You, you hear the case, you can recess for a deliberative session, and you've got done it to finish that night. Understood, thank you. All right, well, thanks for the warning. Any other uh, items that we'd like to see on the agenda for our next meeting? <laughs> Very minor. We just said town meeting day minutes. Just oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Um, there we go. Uh, Danny? No, thank you. Oh, I thought it was Anne. Okay. All right. And then we had discussion of warrants, and then we're done. <laughs> uh, discussion of warrants? Well, hey, okay. I will sign these after oh. we adjourn for this week. Does okay. someone want right, to sign right, right, between right. this meeting and our next meeting for our new policy? Not okay, so I'm looking at my that would be the twenty seventh would be the next Monday and or twenty eighth, Karen, with the assumption we usually have them Monday Tuesday. afternoon or Tuesday morning. Right. This is where things to, to try to come up with a tight schedule is gonna be tricky because no, not tight. I'm more saying someone that week, yeah. like if no, you knew you get a trip. Um yeah, so in theory orders would be prepared late day, Monday the twenty seventh. Um time of that varies based on a lot of factors, but late day, say after 2 o'clock. So if somebody could commit to coming by on Tuesday, um, that'd be great. I'm here at 7 Yeah, I should have no problem coming by on the 28th. You want to do it, Dan? Danny? I could pretty much on Tuesdays, because I have a rotary meeting mm -hmm. in the morning, mm -hmm. by 8.30, 9, 9 o'clock, I could, you know, you know, uh, that's what I usually did was stop yeah. off and a lot sometimes they weren't done. So. Yeah, yeah, they're not okay. they weren't done on a Tuesday morning. Right. Yeah, it's possible. That's that's right. the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean I think we'll continue to send the email yeah. saying yeah. Yeah, we're ready. Um, if somebody yeah. you know, if Mike writes back and says I can stop by tomorrow morning, then yeah. that's it. I mean I think that's all I need is just somebody to respond and yeah. say I can be there that day. And then if it's not soon enough that provides me the opportunity to say, anybody else? <laughs> anybody right. sooner? Um, and I think that would be enough for staff if I just had a response. But as a standing, you right after Rotary, I could swing um, by, pop it on in, in here. Is that okay, Danny? Should we have Mike yeah, do the, the, the awesome. default? <laughs> you know, there may be some, you know, if I'm up at camp or something like that, I, I may defer to one of one of. Mm -hmm. You know, the other members to do it. But. Mm -hmm. All right, but for next Tuesday morning, we're counting on Mike to do it unless we hear otherwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, good. All right, uh, I think we've finished the public agenda. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion that we move to executive session to discuss a uh, matter of uh, pending lit litigation? So you would technically, um, you want to make. 
Uh, first, you'd want to make a finding that premature general public knowledge would place the select board of the town at a substantial disadvantage. And then you'd want to make a motion for executive session. It's a bit odd, clunky, but. Yeah, so I move that <coughs> premature public knowledge of pending litigation would place the town at a substantial disadvantage. That's it, we're just finding that. Does anyone agree that telling the public that what you're gonna do in a lawsuit isn't a good legal strategy? <laughs> Thanks, mm -hmm. Jay. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, I second that motion. Okay, well, okay, we have two, two seconds on that one. Um, so, all in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Uh, Thank so you for your participation. Now, so now I'm going to do it again. So now I'm going to make a motion that we move to enter executive session for the purposes of discussion, confidential legal advice, and invite the municipal manager to join us. Uh, do we have a second on that? Second. second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you, Lisa. No abstentions. Okay, no, we are moving into executive session.